All right, so um, it's a good idea from time to time you're working on something like this. Take some still photographs and take a look at them. Uh, the, while the uh, cameras can sometimes um, exaggerate features, sometimes what that'll do is that'll bring things to light that you're not seeing uh, or taking into account uh, while you're standing in front of an object in three dimensions because it flattens out, flatten, it not only exaggerates it, but it flattens out the, um, the aspects of the, of the uh, visual. One of those things that I saw immediately after I um, selected my thumbnail for the last video, um, I had taken the picture at an oblique angle. This is the angle that I had taken it at. And what it picked up was something that I really hadn't noticed because most of my pictures had been taken uh, from the back straight on like this, which everything looks Jim Dandy this way. But at that oblique angle, this is what I picked up. This looks very unnatural here. See, the way this crosses over and up into here doesn't look bad. But once this rim here kind of defines the outer edge of this tail light, so this portion of this pocket, which is reflective of the uh, rear panel on the stock charger, uh, is a little too deep right here. It doesn't accommodate this edge quite right. So what I've had to do is, on this side here, I, uh, I primered it up so that it's easier to see uh, because I had to add some metal back in here, pull the sidewall forward a little bit, and add a little bit of metal to shallow this up in order that the, uh, the tail light so we can get this in here with one hand. It's a little tough to do with two hands. Let me get this in here and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and uh, put that in there so you can see that a little, a little wrestling match. But anyway, now this uh, this face follows along uh, with with the lens a little bit better. Now, when I go to uh, bond with this, I'll smarten this up a little bit more because it's uh, not exactly as tight as I would like it. But um, but now at least this face, as it transitions out of the hole here, which this doesn't bother me because the um, old tail style tail lights have kind of a little awning going on at the top, uh, but this comes out a whole lot further than the old tail lights. So at least this surface now is is uh, flush with the tail light, the new tail light. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you that little um, uh, little. Uh, fix that I've made. I'm going to have to do the other side the same way. Okay, so um, it's time to start mocking up the uh, the bumper. So what I did really quickly is I just uh, sprayed this with a little gray primer here and then I sprayed this area with a little matte black so that I could actually see the, uh, the contrast, the color contrast and how that's going to balance out with the eventual uh, look at this back uh, fascia. Um, the, um, the car is actually going to end up being um, um, destroyer gray so the bumper itself will be painted out that color and then of course this perimeter will be and then the inset around the tail lights will be matte black as it uh, was painted in the, uh, the old days on the 68's and the 69's. Um, so anyway uh, the first thing that I've done as far as fabrication is I've added this uh, little return rim here and I have to set the tail lights back in here and, and mark it out and then bend down so that the, the tail lights actually have this is a transition point um, so that when I could bring the bumper in over top of this section over here anyway so I'm sneaking up on that we'll see how it goes Okay, I'm not going to uh, film the entirety of this mock-up process because it involves putting stuff on, cutting stuff back away, you know, starting over a bunch of times based on what it looks like with the next step. In other words, you think you're, you've got a good setup going maybe with this ledge here and you put something else down here and it's got too much angle in it. You've got to cut it away, start over again. So it's a, it's a long, involved process and um, all I am doing is taking uh, just pieces of lightweight sheet metal 
and cutting them after I cut paper patterns here and there, and tacking everything up and kind of making my uh, general shapes as to where I want to go as far as how it's going to tuck under, you know, and how I'm going to have to allow for all of this action to go on. And I'm correcting angles as I go based on what it looks like from the side. Uh, you know, this might have to get shallower. This might have to swing out a little bit further. Uh, things like that have to happen, which means I have to cut all this back loose, push it in a little bit, pull it out a little bit. And uh, as I add details to this mock-up, um, you know, uh, it uh, shows me something else. So it's a hunt and peck method, uh, if there ever was one. I'm just using uh, 3 8 DOM tubing uh, in order to create uh, areas where I'm going to have radiuses. And so it's uh, kind of a skeleton as I go, uh, joining everything up. Anyway, that's what I'm up to right now. Um, nothing to see here yet. All right, so this is the partial mock-up that I've come up with in order to kind of get an idea what looks like what. And uh, I need some refinement. Things like this corner here are blended in this direction well, but from the side, they're not so great. Uh, looks a little too faceted. I have to take this and get this to curve down. See this right here, this corner, get this blended out in a way. It looks like a knot right there. That's not good. Anyway, um, so... This is what I came up with, and uh, this is what we're going to go forward with. And uh, I might actually shallow up all of this area a little bit, too. This looks like it's a little bit too deep. It looks a little, little bit like a fish mouth there. But I was trying to keep the overhang big enough for the light fixture to go in that come out of the uh, Challenger bumper. But it doesn't probably need to be that deep. So we're going to move it back just a tick and uh, get some of the exaggeration out of that. Anyway, um, and I also painted it out gray real quick just to give the actual contrast of what this is going to look like, um, you know, when it's finally painted. Moving, moving along. All right, with the uh, mock-up bumper uh, cover off of the car and a few small uh, details changed about where we're going with this. Um, I've gone ahead and filled in my lower corners here to create a smoother transition here. And we're going to be eliminating, there's a little step up here that I had, a little curve up here. We're just going to bring this down and smoothly transition it to the bumper top. All right, within that, with that in mind, I've got uh, to start uh, figuring out how I'm going to attach everything. And the first thing I've done is I have this little sub rim here, which is basically uh, acts as a reveal uh, cover between the, the taillights and the bumper structure which will overlap uh, this little ledge right here. Uh, at any rate, I don't want the bumper it's cover itself to sit directly on that piece of sheet metal for obvious reasons. It'll set up a vibration and chattering because there's no real way to fasten that top down securely. And also, it doesn't look quite right if it's sitting right on top there. So I'll, what I really want to do is I want I want the top of my sheet metal bumper to uh, to be separated uh, by about an eighth of an inch above that rim. Um, so what I've done here is I've added a piece of this is called Delrin. It's like a nylon material. You can mill it. You can get it from a McMaster car out of Atlanta. And it comes in sticks or rods or sheets or whatever you need. Anyway, I uh, went ahead and used this to create what will actually be um, a buffer between the sheet metal and this sheet metal so that we don't get a, a vibration set up here. So it's like a damper. At any rate, that's my start point. I've added that flange so that I could start creating the top of this bumper here. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to also uh, add my tie-in structure down on the um, existing roll pan to where I can extend out um, and have an attachment point at the bottom. In addition to, um, I'm going to have to put some plates in for these uh, bumper extensions for the actual bumper, the sub bumper underneath this bumper cover. All right, the next thing I'm going to choose to do here is... Um, uh, cut two three sixteenths inch plates, a couple holes drilled through them, and um, <clears throat> I've drilled out uh, some holes 
Then I'll be welding this plate on the back side through. So I've got to get this thing in there and I'm going to bolt it up, get it centered up properly. These are the plates that uh, eventually I'll take my outriggers and my 2x2 two two outriggers from this plate uh, to the frame rail extensions in the rear to connect the uh, back end of the car substantially to the uh, Challenger. Uh, also, um, I just while I was over there measuring things up, I went ahead and just marked out this will be the area I'll have to cut out in this uh, internal and external roll pan in order to clearance for the exhaust tips. It's a pretty large uh, exhaust tip, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to take these and I'm going to I'm going to weld these in. This will also uh, create a bolt-up point for my bumper structure, my substructure, and we'll proceed with that uh, as soon as we get everything in place. All right, so the uh, the plates are welded in. Uh, that'll support the rear of the structure uh, to the new car right here, and also give me a bolt-up point for this bumper cover. Um, also, what I did was uh, early on, I had a th in my last video talked about recovering these corners, uh, so to possibly use them on the uh, projected uh, bigger bumper. And it turns out that they were completely the wrong shape by the time you project all these lines out. It uh, wasn't worth trying to use them. So I, uh, but I also I needed something. You see, it's got there's a surface right here basically and then I needed something to follow down here but I also needed something to you know tie this in a little bit better than what I had that plate you know was kind of wiggly it didn't really tie this in as strong as I needed it to so I recovered these corners and cut them down a little bit so they set back in here this will allow for a about a, an eighth of an inch line body line all the way down to the bottom now normally you would have your uh, chrome bumper right here, then these would be out flush, completing the body, uh, coming straight around to your roll pan. Now everything I've got is out a little bit further, so but I want this side plate to look like it's one continuous piece. Um, so I needed something to uh, give me a little bit of a backer here. So I set these in and they seem to work out okay. All right, even though the uh, original roll pan is going to be a substructure now, I had to go ahead and clear out for the exhaust tips that are going to come through the back bumper um, because this is quite a, this would be a, quite a chore to clear that out uh, after I've got a double layer there with the bumper on it. I mean, it wouldn't be impossible, but uh, now's the time to get uh, get started on that. Um, uh, at some point here, I'm going to have to uh, cut those exhausts off, get rid of those resonators, and actually fit these all up and make sure they have the proper clearance all the way around. Um, this is just a rough measurement as far as uh, how much space I need to get them in there without any interference. All right, so I'm starting to build the actual bumper cover now. The first thing I want to do is I want to establish the perimeters, connection points, all that sort of thing. Uh, in an effort to do that, uh, when I did the uh, mock-up, I just pretty much did it freehand. Eyeballed this, eyeballed that, but there were certain things I wasn't happy with. One of them was the way this bottom of this quarter panel comes up at an angle. Well. The uh, mock-up kind of flattened out here, and I didn't like that at all. So I want to make sure that this flows right into the bumper uh, extension here. So in order to project that out, uh, what I've done is I've got this piece of sheet metal <clears throat> just clamped to the bottom, which uh, has the, the bevel already in this roll pan as far as the way the sheet metal's bend down. It's bent down at a matching angle to the quarter panel. So I've got a clamp to that and I've got it also clamped to the quarter panel itself in order to establish this little valley here which will be the bottom connection point. Then I've taken and uh, I've uh, bent uh, this piece of uh, steel at an angle 035. Uh, I've shaped the top to fit the roll pan at the base and then this is just flat on the bottom side um, and how that's going to go in is just, this is just going to basically fit right now down in that valley tucked down and match that angle and then what I'm going to do is put some uh, T-nuts weld nuts in here so that it can be bolted in from the back side that'll basically be the bottom of the bumper which will be secured to the car from the back side of the roll pan here 
So this is the bottom rim. I'll have to make two extension pieces on either side of where the exhaust outlets are and um, secure to make sure the corners are secure. So that'll create a base between here, this flange that I've established up here, and here to start making my connections. Also, I'll have to project that from these bolts with a small framework in order to connect the whole uh, bumper system to these two bolt-up points here because these are going to effectively be my upper connection points. There'll be no connections up here. It'll just be laying, hopefully, very gently on this uh, Delrin and, uh, and it won't actually be physically connected with a fastener. Um, this has the bumper has to go straight in. It can't hang. It can't come from the top. It can't roll because we have these corners in here that have to flush up, and so um, you can't basically bring it in the way I would like to, which is to hang the top of the bumper down and then roll it in and secure it. So it has to come it straight in, in which case I'll be using these uh, uh, stock bumper mount locations here to make an extension out here to hold the bumper in both locations. Anyway, that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Okay, with the flange off the car, after having drilled through, I had it clamped up and I drilled through a bunch of locations where I wanted it to be fastened. And um, I welded these T-nuts on the back side. They're uh, 1032 fine thread. Uh, it doesn't need to be that, but anyway, now I'll attach this to the, to the car and it'll create a rim that I can uh, bring my bumper down to. And uh, then later it'll be easy to just unscrew these from the inside back of the roll pan and um, detach the whole bumper at the bottom. All right, so uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, secured in place from the inside with uh, 1032 button head screws, machine screws. And um, I've added two pieces on each end to pick up the end of the bumper around this opening for the exhaust tip. So anyway, it's also been coated with uh, well through primer front and back because I'll be doing a little overlapping the sheet metal from the bumper onto there. It'll also be coated with uh, well through primer on the back side because it's an overlap. Anyway, uh, that's the beginning of that. I'm currently working on developing these panels on the top now as we go. And I'll show you what I'm up to next. All right, so I'm developing uh, this top ledge first, and I want it to come up just in, just behind the tail light rim here. Now I haven't curved it up to go up up into this uh, side section yet. Um, it's flat. I've coated the back again with well through primer. That's because I've stepped it. And the reason I've stepped it is because I want to put a uh, band, sheet metal band around the edge. What that looks like, it's it's a U-shaped piece. Basically, you bend it up a quarter, then you kind of smash it flat a little bit, leaving a gap for it to be able to slip over the edge of the sheet metal. And once it's folded over, you put it in the shear, and then you shear it off, and that gives you an equal-sided piece here. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do here is this will slip over the edge. And then um, once it uh, does, it'll make a nice finished edge here. Um, that leading edge against the tail light. I don't want that to be raw sheet metal. Um, so I wanted, and I wanted to have a little bit of rigidity and uniformity. Uh, that sheet metal usually gets a little whoppy jawed when it's this long. At any rate, um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to weld this on here. Later on, I'm going to. Um, uh, uh, fill it in with uh, an epoxy that's waterproof because uh, Bondo, you know, doesn't isn't waterproof. So uh, I'm filling in this top groove to make sure that this doesn't get any water underneath of it. At any rate, that's what I'm up to now. And to give you an idea of what this looks like, hopefully we can focus in on this. You can see where I step this down. This is the top surface over here, and now. This has a nice bull nose on it, uh, which gives you a nice clean uh, finished edge. It also it's triple thick now, so that gives you a uh, uh, it gives you a little bit more uh, rigidity here out on the edge. 
And also, because it's stepped, you could see that when it goes time, comes time to epoxy it in or bondo over it, it's flush with the top surface over here, so it doesn't have a little lip going up in the air as it would if I banded it in the opposite direction, obviously. I wouldn't even, if you didn't step it, that's what would happen. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd show you this. This is a method we, we used to uh, finish out the wheel openings on uh, the stock cars back in the day. So, I've uh, done this a million, 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 billion times. Of course, what I never did was coat both the inside of the band and the sheet metal uh, because those cars are pretty much disposable and we didn't care if they rusted a little bit here and there. So, But moisture will get through the Bondo and it will rust underneath the band. So it has to be sealed from the weather if you're going to put it on the street car. Okay, so I've uh, secured these two flange, top flanges uh, to the Delrin uh, uh, spacer with some Clecos here and uh, this you can see this uh, band now gives me a nice clean edge to deal with on the front face plus it's gapped up over top of this uh, little uh, uh, reveal panel right here and then everything's worked up into the corner the next thing I'm going to do is take a piece of 3 inch, inch tubing and uh, run it across here join these two pieces together uh, get the curvature correct and then this goes a little flat here where the license plate goes and then back around to this way and uh, uh, just cut the piece of uh, 3 8 tubing and um, one little trick to um, making sure you uh, bend this a little bit easier keep an eye on it is I've got this clamp to the table over here and then I'll just take a sharpie and I'll lay it flat and I'll run it across the tube like this and that creates a little center line on the tube. As you can see, I've already marked it over here. I'm going to focus up on it at any rate. Um, what that does is it creates a little center line on the on the tube and um, so that when I'm bending it, I make sure that it's in the same plane so I don't get one curve going up this way and the other one whipping down the other way. Just a little trick. All right, now that I've shaped that tube, uh, take in the curve of the panel here and the curve of the panel here, and it's flattish here where the uh, license plate is. <clears throat> Got it clamped into place, um, the center and the sheet metal on the top side of the 3 8 tube. Um, I'm just going to go along and tack that every inch and a half right now, but eventually I'm going to solid weld that on there and then grind that all off, and this will become the radius the outer radius of the uh, bumper on that that side I've got two adjusters here so that I can lift the whole bar raise the whole bar and make sure that this thing is decked out the way I want it to uh, along here so I'm able to adjust it just from the center here and kind of tweak it where I want it to go before I finish welded it up and uh, so that's where I'm at right now all right, with this, uh, these temporary props in place, um, I want to now establish a piece of uh, 3 8 tubing that comes uh, from this point here, which, is the out which defines the width of the beginning of the license plate opening. I want to drop one uh, piece of tubing down in a J shape down to this point here and then run it in to the top side of this attachment flange. Now what I've done here is I've clamped a piece of sheet metal on here so that it follows the angle of the bottom of the roll pan which follows the angle of the quarter panels. So this is coming uphill just as I need it. So what I did was after I marked my center out to my both extents, I dropped the plumb bob down here, marked the edge of this. I have a center mark over here, ran out here so that I'm coming straight up and down on either side over here in order to get this as square as possible and it's going to be out this is not actually where the it'll end this is actually where the plane will end in other words I'm going to put a put temporary piece of um, steel in here a 90 degree bend and some sheet metal and tack it on there so that when I bend my tube into a gradual shape here which I'll mimic on both sides uh, this will be the outside face of the plane not the actual corner of the bottom of the bumper Anyway, that's what I'm up to. 
Okay, this is the idea I was trying to get across as far as um, this piece here is just being a guide. It's clamped, it holds the floor up at the angle that it's supposed to hold it up at. Uh, and then this guides along the floor over here following the angle of the bottom of the roll pan. And then this establishes the angle of the back face of the bumper. So uh, now I'll just cut this loose and move it to the other side and repeat the process. And hopefully that helps keep everything symmetrical also. You can see where this is also defined, this edge over here, vertically. Anyway, moving on. All right, so that's what this looks like now. Uh, this is tied down to this lower flange. It connects the upper uh, to the lower. Now I've got to create a system where everything is stopped back to these two attachment points where the uh, sub bumper normally, uh, or the bumper normally attaches on the uh, original uh, 68 through 70 charger. So I'll be uh, working that out next. All right, so uh, this is the sub bumper. Um, it's just a piece of uh, eighth inch C channel. And um, it's got four bolts acting as studs that are welded directly to the back side of it. And it'll get fished up in there and then bolted through these holes here on both sides. And then I'll uh, start stobbing directly to it so that That'll be the upper attachment point of the bumper, and of course this will be the lower attachment point. So ideally what you'll do is you just feed it straight in through these four holes, and then screw this uh, on the back side and run some nuts on the back side there, and you'll be attached. I say you, I mean me. Okay, so this is most of the substructure, the skeleton, um, that I'll be applying the skins to. Uh, you can see that I've got uh, these broken down into the various panels that uh, to make it easier to work. This panel here sweeps under, it has a roll to it, but it also has a curve to it, so it will need to be wheeled. Um, this one here is a pretty gentle curve down this way, but also goes in this direction. Again, it'll have to have a slight amount of shape in it. Um, trying to do these all together in one piece is usually a disaster. But anyway, um, so that's why I've broken it up into pieces I can handle. I have a little bit more of the skeleton to define this area here. I kind of, in the department of, uh, it's better be lucky than good. This whole bumper ends up by following the bottom of the original tail panel here and roll pan. It has a slight smile to it, which is nice because what happens is if you follow out with this corner, this piece lifts up just enough in the corner over here that it's high enough that it projects up down so that it ends up going down back downhill to the side body line if you follow the body line down over there so if this was to come straight across and say this line came straight out like this then this would come up and then it would flatten out right here but as it is it flows up to a point and then rolls back down to follow that body line in that direction so just a happy accident there, which um, I'm, I'm ple ple pleasantly surprised to see. At any rate, I have a little bit more, like I said, to do on both sides over here. Uh, but this is about all I'm going to get done for this week. And um, just like to thank everybody that's been watching. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.